It seems that we and bowerbirds have the same aesthetic sense and preferences. And that thought pleases me no end. From the beginning of the universe, evolution has generated an infinite variety of organisms, creatures and species. It has given rise to a great diversity of tastes, patterns and modes of survival. Each creature has its own way of attracting its kind, winning a place in the group, conquering and seducing its fellows. Some through their physical attributes, others through their talents. It may be in the kingdom of the bowerbirds where we can observe the most dazzling attraction behaviors based on talent. With peculiarities that will doubtlessly be familiar to us. Bowerbirds dedicate their lives to the art of collecting different objects in order to organize and display them before the eyes of those whose attention they wish to catch. Each bowerbird depends on his aptitude when collecting the things that are most attractive to him and his good taste when he exhibits them with his personal touch. This is the tooth-billed bowerbird. His display is one of the simplest. He covers and decorates the space he has previously prepared and cleaned with his favorite objects, leaves. If anything defines him, it is simplicity. The way in which he distributes and places his objects is, perhaps, the most elementary among the bowerbirds, but it is not for that reason lacking in attraction. The western bowerbird, for his part, hides behind an apparent chaos of chromatic patterns that generate optical illusions and altered perspectives of great appeal. Multiple objects of pale colors where whites and grays predominate. Large quantities that cover the whole space in an enigmatic and arresting manner. The great bowerbird, on the other hand, is characterized by the meticulous display of many objects, mostly plastic. He feels a strong fascination for the colors green, brown, and cream. He also resorts to movements, songs, and calls to gain attention for his wares. A passion for color is what distinguishes the satin bowerbird. This restless collector is interested in all kinds of colorful and shiny objects. And when it is within his reach, he has a certain preference for plastic. The master of refinement and good taste is, without doubt, the Vogelkopf bowerbird. No one outdoes this relentless aesthete in the ability to choose and exhibit his wares. He it is that presents the most sophisticated and dazzling decoration of all. Over a large area, which each individual clears and cleans, he arranges his materials according to kind, color, and type. As they work close to each other, each vocal cop develops his own taste for particular objects and colors, producing unique shapes and combinations of materials, an art in which his species has acquired great expertise. For this reason, a distinctive touch can always be perceived in the personal details of these competitors, giving brilliance and refinement to their displays. Bowerbirds have perfected and diversified over time the art of seduction. Generation after generation, they have transmitted their qualities and knowledge, those ancestral charms, and their vocation for extending their personalities through inanimate objects raises many questions 
for us. Why this fascination for collecting and keeping objects? How far does the identification with material things extend? From where does such a need to surround ourselves with beauty come? How vital is it to express ourselves through personal taste and art? How primitive is our vocation for using all the resources within our reach in the art of seduction? It seems we and bowerbirds have the same aesthetic sense and preferences. And that thought pleases me no end.